Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Norris. Uh, I very much appreciate that uh, <laughs> you have come along. And I would like to thank you all to come here today. I know it's really brave to start your week in Brussels Monday morning. But well, at, <laughs> at least we have some good weather. Eh? So <laughs> Brussels is not so bad after all. So let me explain uh, what uh, we are going to do today. Um, I, we have invited people uh, who have the experience of a new era, which we are trying to explore. So before the European Commission taking any formal initiative, we would like to hear from you, representatives of the science, the industry, the stakeholders, our uh, regional advisor councils, and of course our <coughs> member states. And uh, since uh, this is uh, a new initiative, a new era to explore, uh, we need to hear all, all you can bring to us. We are uh, persuaded in one way or another that maritime special planning or marine special planning or maritime and coastal, this is the best, uh, special planning is very useful. But we have to persuade um, our governments, the parliament, uh, that's why we have here representatives of uh, our member states, the member states that I can say are uh, more advanced in this exercise. Mrs. Christas, who is the Minister of the Portuguese Government for the Environment, Agriculture and Fisheries, and uh, well, Portuguese Government is uh, the champion, I can say. Um, and uh, we are here to hear from you, your experience, and uh, I hope you can also give us some good practices about this issue. And also, uh, Anna here, Mrs. Namjoko from uh, the Polish government, they also have done a lot. We have here also Mrs. Meissner, who was the rapporteur in the parliament, European parliament, about this issue, and uh, we have all you, all you. So let me say a few words in order to uh, give more food for thought. So our idea is that today the oceans and seas around the European Union are shrinking. Don't get me wrong, me wrong, I don't mean that they are becoming smaller, but what I mean is that more and more users are racing to develop their activities there and to compete with those who are already there. Just to give you some numbers to understand what I mean, maritime transport grows at an average rate of over 8.5% every year, almost 10% every year. And cruise tourism alone has tripled its size between uh, 99 and uh, 2009 in a decade. Just a decade and they have tripled their running. Even more potential rests in those sectors that are only beginning to take off, renewable wind energy or aquaculture. Offshore wind energy is expected to grow from 4 gigawatts capacity this year to 150 gigawatts in 2030. This is 4,000%. And we have to understand the potential of deep sea mining and non-wind renewable energy. At the same time, these uses are competing with more traditional activities such as dredging, which are also growing. Dredging companies have increased their turnover by 150% in less than a decade and then is aquaculture. I am convinced that we need to think in terms of more, not less aquaculture. We need more and more aquaculture. This industry can and indeed must grow in Europe if we are to meet the rising demand for fisheries products and make the catching sector more sustainable. One thing that all these activities have in common is where they take place they all need, they all use maritime space. So, this is a possibility, this can be also a problem. Later today, we will be hearing from shipping operators, for example, who will tell us 
that wind farms placed in less than optimal places cost time and money and are even a, a safety hazard sometimes. So it's not so easy. Fisheries operators, on the other hand, calculated years ago that a badly coordinated use of maritime space, crowding them out, can cost them hundreds of millions in revenue. This means more space than now better plant. This is what we need. We need more space, but we need also better plant space. <coughs> the same is true in many areas of the world. You have heard what Mr. North said before. Norway, but also Australia, United States, they have set up systems to manage their ocean space coherently. They too have understood that oceans are economic engines and have made special planning a key component of their ocean policy. This is what we need to do in the European Union. And this is what my initiative is about. So, our idea is to do it also in the European Union. Let's have maritime special planning for a sustainable exploitation of our maritime spaces and marine resources. If we do not give ourselves the means to manage the growing demand for sea space across our sea basins, these developments could be slowed or even blocked. Their impact on the environment would be higher and they would cost more to set up. Studies have been carried out to estimate the economic benefit of maritime special planning in EU sea basins. So it's not only about the environment. It's about economic profit. And this will be our argument to persuade the governments and the sector about it. I will spare you the details, but the economic benefits, either in investments or in simple economic returns, go into hundreds of millions of euro. And we have studies proving that. Operators tell us already that they need, in order to cooperate with us, they need transparency, efficiency, predictability, and stability. Transparency about the rules and priorities that determine how offshore activities can take place. Efficiency of the processes that allow them to invest, not make their life more difficult. Predictability about what is possible now and what will be possible after 10 years, for example. Stability, so they know that the activity they are undertaking now has a future. They know that maritime special planning can provide them with these essential conditions for their success. An additional element to consider is that all this is coherent with what happens in land, coastal management. That is why I'm working closely with my colleague, Commissioner Potocnik, to ensure coherence with their policy on integrated coastal zone management. We need this. We need a coherent approach for maritime special planning and coastal management. So my intention is uh, to work uh, closely with relevant actors to develop this policy. Rest assured, however, our intention, the Commission's intention, is not at all to interfere with concrete planning issues at national level. That's why we have the ministers here today. That's why the subsidiarity principle of the treaty is relevant for this exercise, and we're going to respect what the member states would like to do. This is why we have organized the, this event, and uh, I would like to thank you all for being here. With your help, I hope that we will be able to announce a proposal on the best way to further develop maritime special planning in the course of this year. This is our intention. The main aim of this initiative will be to ensure that planning is ensured at member state level, respecting what they are doing, but we also need a common framework on how this is done. We don't uh, want the national initiatives to compete each other because afterwards this will mean a great problem for us. So we need a common framework to how this is done. 
And also, we would like to be sure that there is a fully functioning cross-border cooperation between states on planning issues. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Europe is now at a crossroads. Everybody knows that. Everybody speaks about the crisis. We need concrete action now to make sure that the European Union delivers on growth and jobs. This is the number one priority for the European Commission. We need to set the seat now for those economic activities that will carry us into the future. So, blue growth is what I'm doing under my portfolio about this exercise. Blue growth is about investing in maritime Europe, but focusing our efforts where it matters and working with emerging sectors to secure their development. There is no need to intervene where growth is already there. But what we need really is to give a momentum to the emerging sectors. So we are currently determining the best course for this and uh, I plan to propose a policy initiative on how to harness blue growth later this year. Our focus will be on emerging sectors, for example, aquaculture, seabed mining, offshore renewable energy sectors, and maritime tourism. So these are our priorities in order to give uh, momentum to new, to emerging sectors that are not in momentum what, uh, which is not already there. Blue growth can also focus on how we can secure the health of our coastal economies that depend on their maritime assets. We are trying to organize the operation of regional funds and policy in a way that supports the development of coastal communities to the greatest extent, extent possible. In some dear participants, we have to do what it takes to make sure that the right conditions exist for a blue economy to develop. And maritime special planning is the right answer to secure and support blue growth for the European Union. I look forward to hearing from our panelists, all of them, and experts about their experience and their expectations. I welcome you all to the conference and I hope that we'll have some interesting discussion. Thank you.